Good day to all. This will be our second part involving discussions on business software. So the continuation would normally focus with terminologies that could be something new to us or could be learned by you already, starting with mashups. Mashups would be combinations of something just like in music or in that particular field like remix version of music. So for softwares, MashUp is an integrated application containing some or all features from several applications. They are combined that they, of course, are from several applications which are or that are combined to certain form, which would become the MashUp. And then next would be the website design tools, which are used to change the content of web pages. They're used for design. And of course, as expected, can edit our web pages and also like the templates. And here are some examples like front page, Adobe Dreamweaver and Go Live and much more. Next to mashups would be groupware. From the term group where, which is group, meaning collaboration of several applications also. But the overall application is called group where that enables workers to collaborate in real time over the web. This would involve integration of multimedia technology and the web technology allows for remote collaboration for as long as we have the access or the internet, for example, and the network to connect. And in this case, this would eliminate travel times and facilitates expression and exchange of ideas. So we can do that easily and travel times can be eliminated or reduced to certain levels that are already lower or smaller from the previous ones. Next is V. It's an application that mimics sensory reality using software. So, the virtual version would be that we can see a certain form that would be similar to the original one and will be shared across a lot of platforms. Then we can actually see that on our end or on the opposing ends from the original source. As said, it would mimic, it would copy those virtual reality. It would simulate sight, hearing, and touch. It uses equipment such as Google's or gloves, earphones, and moving bases. Then there are two elements for VR devices or virtual reality devices with immersion and interaction. Immersion would be that user senses that she or he is surrounded by the simulated environment it's as if the user actually can tell that he or she is in that environment. Well, interaction allows users to be able to interact or to play or make some actions and decisions in the environment, in the virtual world or in the computerized world using the VR devices. Like again, the goggles or goggles, gloves, earphones, and moving bases, which reminded me of, for example, certain games that are done virtually. So you are just, for example, sitting on chairs or certain platforms that can move or that can be, for example, shaken. So it's like we are really on a certain part that, let's say I record a horror train version virtual wherein it would really move depending on certain parts. And it's like we are really going inside a tunnel or moving from an upward place to a downward place. So something like that. And then as a continuation, the VR environment senses movement again, responds to signals and provides feedback to users. So basically there is an input process and output. VR can be used by businesses to decrease cost of planning, buildings, machines and vehicles because we can make simulated environments and simulated 
construction like the miniature version, for example, or even the computerized version where we can see what would be inside of those buildings, how they would work. I'm talking about the machines and the vehicles. Another interesting word is avatar, which is on the sense if we go to certain dictionaries that would mean spirits or that would mean spirit, of course, it's singular and it's imaginary. In this sense, also in our business software discussions, avatar is an imaginary figure used to represent real person. So it's a representation of someone or somebody, but it's imaginary, but it would also be very similar to the original person or source. VR on the web includes public gathering applications. And there's a term of second life, which is an imaginary world using avatars to allow real people to meet and communicate. And that's the good thing here. Also, we have the 3D geographic software that would give us the length, width, and depth or height dimensions. Similar to virtual reality, this is really good, or this would be really good because we can have, again, three-dimensional models of geographic locations. So it's as if we are really on a certain part or place in the world or wherever that is. And of course, we can also feel that we are immersed to the location. Models are created from land and aerial photographs. This would help with navigation when tied to GPS software in terms of the location. This would be useful for city planners, service agencies, tourism, and travel agencies. So example, we would like to know where to go, just like the Google Map and Waze app, so we can really go there easily. Another one would be the system software, which would be very essential for certain applications to work. In fact, we have mentioned this in part one. Make sure you have watched that and viewed that as well. And without, again, the OS or operating system software, then certain applications would not work. We've said, again, Microsoft OS and the Apple iOS. Deals with essential operations between the user and computer, such as loading, copying, and deleting files. You can do that using the explorer of files. Managing memory resources. We can basically delete some files to create more spaces. We can also make partitions, like we divide the C into different drives. Operating peripheral equipment, meaning additional items attached to our computers. Like, for example, we can also attach players like the ODDs or the detachable that is usually powered by the USB or the cord to our computers and such can play CDs and DVDs. So peripheral equipment can also be attached and compasses, compilers, and interpreters that we have discussed on our first part. So certain images or objects for our programs can also be incorporated, compiled and interpreted accordingly. Applications must be compatible with system software. Otherwise, they would not work. OS is the most important program on the computer. As said, this would basically be the mother software and the application software should be aligned and should be compatible with such. This would, number one, recognize input from keyboard and mouse, so from the input devices, also for the output device, like for the computer display of the monitor or screen. About files and directories would be kept tracked. Then running of applications and the memory, which is very important, management, of course. Usually developed using low-level programming languages, such as assembly languages, which would use words and also known as platforms. So this is an example of OS that would mediate between applications and the computer and controls peripheral devices. So peripheral devices are said like the player here, but then the example here is actually the hard drive of the computer. The OS can work with the peripheral devices if certain programs or instructions will be inputted to such. So we have for the OS, 
our monitor screen, the keyboard, the mouse, printer, and the hard disks or drives, which are our peripheral devices. And the OS would help if instructions are to be provided by users, then such will be sent to the respective devices and will be processed accordingly or the peripheral equipment will process accordingly to such and will produce the output desired. Then, as a continuation, we also have the APIs, which are the application program interfaces, software included in the OS that can be used by application program developers and can also help in easy installation of application programs. Also, utilities perform other OS functions such as hardware diagnostics, disk check, and file sorting. In case of certain problems, about the software, then there can be ways to troubleshoot, like, for example, disk check for the memory and sorting of files. For the hardwares, we have hardware diagnostics. Then OS position is basically logical. So it would sort certain instructions and would act out and command based on those instructions to be sent to certain peripheral equipment or devices. It would again mediate such users with the equipment. User interacts with user interface using menus, icons, and application commands. Then from user to application, which would convert the input coming from the user into OS commands and the commands to the CPU to carry out the operation. Here are basically our certain relationships involving those items mentioned. We just have to take note under figure 5.7 that computers operate on a number of layers starting from the user interface and moving inward to the hardware. So inward would be the flow. User interface, menus, icons would be sending procedures and functions. We're talking here about the users. Then we also have the application software in which such would receive the procedures and functions. And then we have the system software that would act out as mediator to connect with the hardware. So for the system software, there would be operating system, language translators, communication programs, and the likes. Then OS must manage the system by allocating hardware resources to applications. Of course, there are certain instructions that would also affect certain components of the software. OS provides several services, including the user interface, the memory allocation, including the use of virtual memory. Hard disk, of course, is really an extension. And then it can save a lot of files because it has a large memory capacity or memory storage capacity. PNP or plug and play recognize and run a device as soon as it is physically attached. Driver is a software that enables OS to control a device. For example, a certain component of the computer can really mediate the traffic, so closely related to OS. Additional OS services include the database management, so keeping of the files and storing them, networking in terms of connection with several networks, whether public or private or home, and the security, which are basically very important three items. Then different computers and types of microprocessors use different OSs, since OSs would differ upon also to the respective capacities and needs for certain users that are also aligned with the types of computers to be used or utilized. Then as a continuation, we have operating systems which are popular for PC or personal computers like Windows XP, and Windows Vista, but then as of the date or today, of course, we have a lot of versions now. In fact, we are now at Windows 10 and Windows 11 is coming Linux and for our Apple Mac OS or the Apple iOS. Popular network OSs that are compatible with the OS and then Windows and Mac clients include NetWare and Windows Server. Then Linux is a free OS based on Unix. It depends upon our computers, though, and the needs again and the or the requirements. 
here are operating systems which are popular and then the name and the OS developer. So it depends. Well, we can focus with PCs, which are very relatable to us. So we mentioned about the first three. On top of that, we have the BSD and Solaris. For the first one, Windows, of course, that's Microsoft. Mac OS X would be Apple computer. And then we have also other system softwares, which are mentioned, compilers and interpreters. On top of that, we have the communications software. So example, if you are using our cell phones, there are also respective communications apps or application softwares that we can use. Like for example, Viber or even Messenger or Zoom. And of course, these apps are also available should we use PCs or laptops. But basically, they're used for communications, whether just chatting or texting or sending emails and receiving emails or video conferencing and the likes. Utilities, so certain additional softwares that would help us enhance our experience in the virtual world. And database management systems for keeping again on the files. Communication software supports transmission and reception of data across computer network. As said again, our Viber, WhatsApp, and the likes. Utilities include antivirus programs, firewalls, and anti-spyware, anti-adware programs, which would help us again make our virtual environment experience nice. Since we are free of viruses and we are protected in case that we are going to exchange files or receive files or share information. Then another one is for open source software, which will be differentiated from proprietary software. Let's begin with the latter, proprietary software, sold or licensed for profit. So basically, this is normally already available and commercially available, so a commercial package, which is sold or licensed again for profit. So this is really for sale. Source code is private and not available. And then copies or prototypes as well as copies from the masters will be sold or can be sold. Developer retains all rights to the software. User purchases a license to use the software. So it is just the right to make use of that particular software, which is true, for example, for Microsoft Office in terms of the apps. It's the license that we are paying for or buying, and we are just paying. So if we do not pay anymore, then it will be removed from us. Next is open source software, which is a free source code developed through voluntary collaboration of programmers. And with that, we can actually install these apps and make use of these apps for free. Fewer bugs because many programmers review the code. So any problems will be posted, for example, on the open forum, like on the Google Play, for example, for apps and the developers and programmers can check them. So we'll develop their created softwares accordingly. We have popular open source software includes Mozilla Firefox, Thunderbird, MySQL, and Perl. Then we have to take note that not all free software is open source. As said, Microsoft Internet Explorer is free, but it is proprietary because it is only the license or the right to make use of is actually bought or purchased. Another one is Linux, which is a best known open source OS, free versions, versatile on the second paragraph, but has limited number of applications though that can be used and it can run on a lot of devices. For software, it is usually licensed and for licensed software, the permission is limited. If you would like to renew, then please, especially the renewal fees will have to be paid. There are models for licensing a permissive model anyone can use and sell modified versions of the software and the GPL anyone can use and make modified versions but cannot sell modified versions for profit. Permissive is for profit, GPL is not. For packaged software in buying certain softwares, which is closely related with buying hardware, then these are the items that have to be taken into account. Some would be developing their softwares in-house. However, should we compare with already available softwares, then we have to make our analysis. 
So in that, we have to take note of the following cost, which is very important. The benefits must be higher than the cost. Time to implement, for example, cost of interrupting operations and modification cost to customize the software. If we have specific needs, what are the costs involved? Then this is a sample evaluation form for softwares the factors, what to look for, and our score. And there would be, of course, a certain target or benchmark for us to say that we really have to buy certain software. Or there is, for example, a certain range of values. And here are the factors. So we have fitness for purpose, ease of learning to use, how easy for us to learn to use it, and how easy for us to use it. Compatibility with other softwares, the reputation of vendor, especially with our community, how trusted that vendor is, how trustworthy he or she or it is. Then availability and quality of telephone and online support. Can we ask like in a regular turnaround time or the time it takes for us to be responded for or to, are they available or is it available? That would be one factor also. Networking. Try to maximize ability of many computers to share the software. If ever we are convinced, normally we are going to share the news and the good news, of course, to others who might be interested with the usage of such software. Cost is very important, I said. Using cost-benefit approach, the benefits in whatever form should be higher to cost in whatever form. Then it's interesting. Here are some examples of total cost of ownership the annual license fees, our support and maintenance costs. Also, another one is, let's look at it, necessary hardware upgrades and other costs associated with the use of the software. To summarize, software is a collective term for computer programs. It would refer to instructions. Two categories are system or application. In making softwares, we make use of programming languages like the C in my experience and software development tools to develop such software. Increasing amount of software is linked to the internet because many people are using already the internet. That's why a lot of people also are using softwares or apps. Then code written in non-machine language to be translated by compilers or interpreters so that the machines can process them accordingly either in just codes or digits or even in words and on sentences in close to English form. Then in choosing our application programs, we can either buy already finished, which are custom designed and already packaged. So examples would be again the MS Office tools, productivity tools, just as or just like Microsoft Word and Microsoft Excel or spreadsheets that would help improve worker effectiveness and efficiency as said productivity. Also, we have hypermedia and multimedia technology that can be used for a lot of purposes for businesses. Also, on top of that, we have training, education, and research, which are also important areas for our business. So in sample would be training of employees and then also with research for, let's say, new products that can be launched to the market and the lights. Then groupware would combine hypermedia and multimedia with web technology. So groupware will be combinations of certain applications and softwares. VR or virtual reality tools would help build models of products and structures to be easy since we can experience already, even we are still at the modeling stage, what can be expected out of the project. 3D is very important, especially for locating our locations and areas. So this is closely related again to GPS or global positioning systems software. Many applications support web services, especially if we have the internet connection or the Wi-Fi and access to information on the web. Then OS is the most important system software because without it, then other application softwares cannot work. OSS or open source is for free. But some free softwares are actually also the opposite, which is actually the licensed software as discussed a while ago. And that's proprietary software. We're in, it is for profit. Then 
software is purchased or licensed, as mentioned. And in analyzing whether we are going to purchase software or not, then here are some important factors that we have to consider. Ease of learning, ease of use, vendor reputation, expected quality of vendor support, especially for after sales servicing. Then software piracy is still a significant problem in today's world because there are certain sources we're in the softwares can be copied and can be installed also on softwares or computers or PCs. All right, so thank you very much for listening to this particular part two. Hopefully you learned something from this particular session also and thank you and God bless.